BIOS corruption in my motherboard? Surely you're joking. So today we're going to take a quick look at the feature of some ASUS motherboards called USB BIOS flashback. Now you'd have to check and see if your specific motherboard supports this feature, but on motherboards that support this feature, it is impossible for you to brick your motherboard. You literally cannot flash the BIOS in such a way that it is unrecoverable. Not only that, but we're going to take a look at the specific case where we've got an Ivy Bridge E processor, but the BIOS on this Rampage doesn't support Ivy Bridge E. Ooh. So what do we do? Well, it turns out we can flash the BIOS using this USB BIOS flashback without even having RAM or a CPU installed. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. One of the great things about USB BIOS flashback is that it doesn't depend on having a CPU or RAM installed on the motherboard. It's a function of the motherboard that can do uh, the feature completely by itself, which is really awesome. In the situation that we're in, we've got this brand new Ivy Bridge E CPU, which won't work on the motherboard without the latest BIOS. And so we would have no way to upgrade it if we didn't have the USB BIOS flashback feature. Now, if you already have a computer and you're running an older CPU, and you just want to upgrade, then you can upgrade your CPU through Windows or the BIOS utility or however you want to do it. But for people that are buying new computers, this is really handy. This is also really handy for people that are flashing their BIOS and something goes wrong and then their motherboard has been bricked. This will recover from that situation as well. So the USB BIOS flashback is very powerful. Maybe you just like messing with the UEFI tables. You know, there, there are people out there that do that and then they brick their motherboard. Well, this will recover from that as well. So the next thing to do now that we got the motherboard set up is to actually go download the BIOS, the latest BIOS that goes with this particular motherboard. So you've got to go to support.asus.com and put in your motherboard model and go through the downloads section. And I usually just pick DOS. Um, that works most of the time, although a few times I've seen the BIOS not listed under DOS, but sort of poke around with the operating system choices because with a BIOS it doesn't really matter too much about the operating system. Um, because they're just categorizing it that way. Look for the latest BIOS, and then you want to download it. And then when you've got it downloaded, you'll have to open the archive and copy it to a flash drive. Now the flash drive needs to be formatted as FAT32. You can just right click on it and go to format. And uh, in the format options, it'll say FAT32 um, as one of, your, one of your format options. But most USB flash drives are already formatted FAT32, so it's not really a big deal. The next thing, and this is key, is that we have to rename the BIOS file. Like normally it comes as like, you know, Rampage, you know, whatever, blah, 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 and it's a really long file. That, that doesn't work. The, the USB BIOS flashback doesn't look for file names like that. It looks for a file name that corresponds to your specific motherboard. So in our case, it's gonna be r4g.cap, and we've gotta rename it. So that's what we're doing here, r4g.cap in our case. Different motherboards will have a different file name that you'll have to rename to. You'll have to look on the ASUS website to find out which file name you have to use when you rename it. And finally, the last thing is to take the USB drive and put it in the white USB port. It's got to be the white USB port for USB BIOS flashback to work. On ROG motherboards, you'll have to press and hold the ROG connect button for three seconds. And if it's uh, not an ROG motherboard, then I think it's going to be USB BIOS flashback. It'll be like a, two little arrows with the word BIOS underneath it, something like that. So look for that on your motherboard. Now, the computer, if you're doing this on a motherboard that's already installed in a system and has a CPU and, and RAM, you know, the computer should be off when you do this. If you're just doing this on a motherboard on a table like we're doing, obviously it's off because there's no processor, there's no RAM, there's nothing. So the uh, BIOS uh, or ROG Connect button will flash while it's doing something. This will take a little while. It's not the fastest thing in the world. But once it's done, um, your BIOS has been flashed, hopefully, fingers crossed. So we're going to go ahead and throw this in a system and boot it up and see if it boots up. And it booted up. So the, it worked. This is great. So even if you brick your BIOS, like if you're fiddling around and you upgrade it and you're in Windows and then you get a blue screen or something like that and your BIOS is half there and the system won't post, this will still work. This works even when the system is off. And... Too many people out there don't realize that. It's like, oh, well, you know, you can just flash from, from USB. And it's like, oh, well, in, you know, any BIOS can do that. You just go in the BIOS and then load from USB. It's like, no, this, this flashes from the BIOS when the system is off. A lot of people still don't understand that. So that's why we did a video on it. So take a look at this feature. It's pretty neat. That was Asus USB BIOS flashback. Until next time.